Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. This video is a bit of an experiment because usually of course I'm talking about how to play jazz, how to analyze chord progressions, study uh, arpeggios and use scales and stuff like that. But I also very often get asked about tone, about how to get a good jazz tone, how to use effects and set up amps, and especially about how to get a jazz tone out of a solid body guitar. So that's what I'm going to try to make a video on. I can make more videos on tone and how I think about that, how I use effects. Uh, if that's some, something you guys are interested in, you can just leave a comment on this video, of course. Uh, so what I'm going to do is that I'm going to try to get what I would consider more of a jazz tone out of this Stratocaster. Of course, the term jazz tone doesn't really exist. It's, it's really a subjective thing. We all have an idea about what we're talking about when we say jazz tone, but it does actually mean anything from Jim Hall with the tone turned all the way down up to um, Bill Frisell playing surf music with uh, George Benson and Schofield in between. So it, there are many things that could be a jazz tone. And I think also in the end, if you're playing a Stratocaster, it's gonna sound a little bit like a Stratocaster and it kind of should sound like a Stratocaster. That is the instrument. But in this video, you're also gonna get an idea about what I consider important about a tone and what I wanna have out of a guitar tone, especially if I wanna use it in a jazz context. And that's important no matter what guitar it is. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, improve the way that you solo, check out some interesting arpeggios or chord voicings, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. So what I'm going to do in this video is that I'm first going to talk about how I set up the guitar in terms of tone, volume, uh, and especially the, the selection of pickups. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I'm setting up the amp uh, and some ideas on what I think is important with that. And then finally, I'm going to show you some tricks also to get more of a jazz sound out of, uh, out of a guitar like this using some effects because there are some effects and especially there is one really good trick with an effect that you probably already have as a pedal that you can use if you want to have a fatter sound out of your, um, of what I would call a fatter sound out of your Stratocaster. The setup that I'm using in this video is the same setup as what I'm always using in the videos. So it's the guitar and then into my Fractal Audio X8. And from there, what you're hearing, if you're hearing the microphone, the camera, then you are hearing uh, the, that sound through my QSC K10 monitor, which is just a powered speaker, uh, like a, a monitor. If you're hearing something that's recorded, then you're hearing the recording of the X8 into my computer through my audio interface. My Stratocaster is an SRV Strat, so it's a Steve Ray Warren signature Stratocaster from 1992. And uh, the pickups in here are um, Texas Special pickups, I think they're called. I think they made them for this guitar, actually. I'm not entirely sure how they're made. Uh, this is just what's in here. That's what I'm always using. When it comes to getting a jazz tone out of a, uh, of what I would consider a jazz tone out of a guitar like this, you don't want to have too much treble in there. And that means that we don't want to use the bridge pickup because that that's really a different sound. I think most of the time I'm actually, most of the time I'm using this guitar, no matter what I'm using it for, I'm playing the neck pickup. I think that's the one that sounds the best. I'm gonna play a few examples and then record them in, in my door, and then you can hear exactly how it sounds better than what you hear on the camera mic. I think that's that's the best way to judge. Uh, there are a few settings, so I would probably just use the neck pickup. That's really what I would go for. But you can also use uh, the neck and the middle pickup together. So, but I think it kind of shaves out some of the the fullness of the tone. So I prefer to have this because it's just a little bit more focused. And then in terms of tones, I'm using tone quite a lot, but I'm always a bit hesitant with being too radical about it. So I don't really like to to take the tone down too much. So the guitar with the neck pickup and then tone completely open. And then if I take down the tone to about five. And then the tone all the way down to two. You can hear it gets kind of muddy along the way. Then if we start mixing up the uh, pickups, so now I have the middle and the neck pickup. 
And then if I start taking off, we can still take off some tone. Let's take some tone off on, on the middle. I think that's there. So this is on five. And if I take it all the way down here. The main thing that I listen for is sort of how the guitar reacts in terms of the attack and also a little bit if it gets, I think this is getting to the point where it's going to be difficult to really cut through in a band setting or at least you kind of disappear quite quickly because you lack the definition of it. Guitar is really about the mids. That, that's where guitar exists. That, that's what you want to hear. And that's also, if you listen to records, primarily what you hear is, is not going to be so much the highs and the lows. It's going to be the mids that are really defining sort of a guitar tone. And also if something sounds full or what I call fat in the beginning, then it's about having a lot of mids. That, that's really where it's, it's at for guitar. I think what happens here is that at some point when I start cutting the tone, then we lose the upper mids too much. And then uh, it kind of loses definition. And just sort of the low end of, of what is going on is not really going to... It just sounds like I put a blanket over my uh, amplifier. So that's not really a useful sound as far as I'm concerned. Another thing that greatly influences how the guitar sounds is where we're picking the string. And this is something that we don't talk about too much, but uh, it does actually make a huge difference whether we're playing like here or here. So that's something you want to keep in mind as well. Uh, you can also see that some people who have a really sort of soft sound with not that much attack are very often playing up here and not so much here. I tend to play sort of in the middle, so, so around actually around the middle pick up here. Uh, not so much by choice, but as just sort of a random habit, I guess. Uh, but that means that I have sort of this sound. And then if I was to do something similar up here. So that's a little bit, little bit softer in sound. I'm playing a lot of notes for one reason, and that is that the difference for me mostly is in the, in the attack of the note. So there's a difference between this and this. And it's a little bit easier to pick fast thing, things if you're down here because the string moves a little bit less down uh, where it's close to the bridge than it does up here. As far as the guitar is concerned, then for me, I think the, the best tone is really going to be the neck pick up and then maybe the tone rolled off a little bit somewhere between five and seven. That gives me a sound that is not hollow, still warm enough without losing the focus and without getting lost in the band. That's sort of the main thing there. So what we have here is X8 Edit, which is the program that I'm using or that I can use to program my, my amp, my, my fractal audio uh, modeling unit. Uh, it's kind of practical to use this because uh, then you can see what's going on. It's easy for you to see, follow along with what I'm doing. So what we have here is the way the signal works within the X8, uh, it comes in here. And then we have a few effects. You can see like normally my main patch, I pretty much only use one patch actually when I'm working with it. And that's called double warps, because I use a double warp, which is a, a twin model. So a Fender twin, vintage Fender twin. And that's what I'm used mo I use most of the time. I have a special version of that that's called video. And the difference is there that live, I have some expression pedals, but I've taken those out because I don't need them when I'm making videos. Uh, so uh, they're disabled, and that's why I have a video version. And now I wanted to also show you some things with this one for a strat. So I saved it one more time, and then I have a few effects added that I'll add in later. But essentially, this is just the settings that I use and that you hear all the time with any of the guitars that I'm using in my videos. So if we just take, so I can just sort of select the different things, like here's an overdrive, compressor, amp, cabinet. So the core part of the sound is really about the amp and the cabinet, which is the speaker. And in this case, uh, we have the amp is a twin reverb. and um, I think the main thing you want to pay attention to with, with the amp settings is that you don't, like I said it already, guitar is about mids. That's where the guitar starts to sound full. And if you're listening to the typical jazz guitar songs, that, tones, then they are 
about beats. That, that's really what's there also on recordings. There's not really a ton of low end or a ton of high end. That's then also what you kind of want to have in your in your amp set. And, and that's what you see here also. Like uh, basically, this is also what a, the front part of an amp would look like. So you would have a bass, a mid, and a treble. And I'm turning down the bass, I'm turning up the mids, and I'm turning down the treble a bit also. And that's the main thing that's happening here. Just to show the effect of this equalizer, which is really the main thing that I'm using when I'm programming this. Um, this is the way it's set up now. So my standard setting. And then, like I said, like you want to not have too much bass in there because if you turn up the bass, let's just turn it up a bit so you can hear what happens. And you can hear, of course, you can hear a difference unless you're listening on a phone, then you probably can't hear a difference. But the information that comes that you get from here, from, from adding the bass, it's not really something that's telling you something about what's happening with the guitar. It's just a bunch of rumble. And um, one of the advantages to using a modeler like this is actually that you can take that away because when I have this in my sound, then I'm just in the way of the bass player. And that means that sometimes what I'm playing is making it difficult to hear the bass. And there's really no need for that, especially not live, and especially not if you're playing with a double bass player. So that's why it's good to just take out some bass. And then, of course, the fullness of the sound is, is the mids here. I have to take that away, then that's not this. And you can also kind of hear with this. When I take away the mids, actually, I have this mid boost on as well. So. so that's something like this. And with the original setting, that's. Something like that, and you can you can hear that it's um, it's a lot thinner. So the mid boost is a good thing to have in there. Of course, the mid boost is not something that's found on an, on a vintage uh, Fender, and that's something that's built into the X8. But it, it works really well in terms of just getting a fuller sound out of the Stratocaster. <laughs> That's what I'm using really a lot to, to, to get this kind of sound that sounds still fuller than a normal strap. And I think if you take that away, you get more the kind of sound that you would maybe associate with um, with pop or soul. That you get the that kind of sound. And now I turn off the reverb as well because that doesn't sound that good for uh, funk, I think. But yeah, the. The fullness of having that mid boost is, is really useful, I think, for, for getting closer to a jazz sound. And then, of course, you don't want to have too much treble, and that's just, let's see if we can use that. And uh, that, that's how that works. I think it's just better. Even though it's, of course, it's a little bit less defined. So, what, how much treble you want to have in there? I'm not cutting that much treble, as you can see. Also, I, now I've already forgotten what I originally had it set for. But um, you want to not have too much of it, but you can actually have more treble than you think. That will be different. Some of the newer Fender amps, you almost want to cut the treble completely to get the right sound. The thing that's difficult with, especially with Fender amps, is that when you have an equal uh, the equalizer on them with the with bass mid. And treble, then if you turn the bass all the way down, then the mid reacts differently from uh, what happens if you have the bass on half. So it's it's a lot of looking for and, and searching for the right kind of setting with that, um, and and that will actually differ a bit from from amp to amp. And what I usually do is just uh, try and use my ears and see what I can find. But I will start with cutting, especially the bass. Uh, and a little bit of treble, and then see how much I need to boost the mids. And that will just vary from amp to amp. In the end, how you want to set your sound is going to be by ear. It's not about knowing it, because in general, amps are just completely left and right different, uh, even if it's if it's the same kind of amp. They're not in that way consistent, I think. And also, they vary so much through the years that a Fender amp from one year is not the same as a Fender amp from another year. That's also something that's really worthwhile. Remembering, I think. 
But I think for the main, for the main part, focus on getting a lot of myths in there. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that I have a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support. And it's really that that makes it possible for me to keep making all these jazz guitar videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, then I can also give you something in return for your support. The final piece of the puzzle is that once you've set up your amp and you've chosen the pickups for you, that you want to use on the guitar and the tone settings and stuff like that, you can still get an even fuller sound by using some effects. And I think I want to show three different variations on how you can, can do that. One especially I think is really useful because it's involving using an overdrive pedal, which is something that you probably have laying around. And weirdly enough, the overdrive trick is something that I learned from people playing metal because they very often would play sort of an overdrive pedal into a Marshall amp, not so much to add gain to it, but more to just tighten up the low end. And essentially what it, it does is then that it works as a mid boost, because especially if you have sort of these tube screamer uh, like overdrive pedals, then they they kind of work with just boosting the mids and cutting the highs and the lows. And that's pretty much what you want to have for a jazz sound as well. You just don't want to have any overdrive. Uh, so that's the first one. So just to show how that works. So here, this is a tube screamer model in the X8. Uh, first with no tube screamer, so. And then if I put on the overdrive. You can really hear also that with a tube screamer, it gets a little bit nasal because it's cutting a lot of low end. And still get a little bit better sound by probably just just turning down the tone a little bit on the guitar. Of course, you want to have it set up. You can also hear that it's set up so it doesn't drive the amp too much. You want to push the amp a little bit so it compresses. That's a good thing to just get a little bit more sustain. And for the rest, you really just want to have it shape the, the tone and, and then it'll sound like more like a humbucker essentially. Uh, so that's one option. This is a tube screamer. Then the other one that I have here is another tube screamer based overdrive. I'm not entirely sure what originally this is uh, in the X8, but uh, that sounds like this. And here you can hear this one doesn't cut the low end as much, so it doesn't get so nasal. And you still have that kind of warm sound. And then again, first this was tone full and then if I turn back down the tone a little bit so you get this kind of sound you can hear maybe I should turn down the game just a little bit I don't know but it, it is overdriving a little bit but of course to me uh, if, if I'm listening to so the older Wes recordings and also the older Kenny Burrell recordings then you can hear that that's a Fender amp that's turned up pretty loud and that's not completely clean. So I kind of tend to want to have a tone that's not entirely clean. I, I think that sounds better. That's what I go for most of the time. So that's also, again, tone is really a subjective and a personal thing. Of course, you can turn it down. You can still get this effect without getting the overdrive. If you work with it, you just have to be careful with how you're setting the balance between the gain of the amp and the gain of the, of the overdrive. And this will work, this work, works equally well uh, with um, with a real amp, that, that's also how this works. That I've done that quite a few times also, if I'm flying somewhere and uh, and using a, an amp, because usually I will get a Fender amp, unless I'm unlucky, then I get a jazz chorus. Another way of getting a similar effect is to use a compressor pedal. And again, the compressor pedal will probably work a little bit as a boost, uh, and it will also even out the sound a little bit more, and it tends to also become a little bit more mid-focused. And that's what I have here. So first we have the sound without the compressor. And then with the compressor. And of course again, oh actually I already have the tone down. down. So it gets it gets closer to, to a humbug in that way. And it gets a little bit more even. The problem you can have with compressors is that it does take away dynamics. And if you're used to really being a dynamic player, then that can be really annoying. Uh, I find most of the time 
whenever I try to work with a compressor when I'm playing live, then, then I find it frustrating that I lose the dynamics because I'm really used to uh, playing softer and then actually becoming softer. Of course, an amplifier compresses as well, but, but not as much. And here is like the difference. There is some difference, but the difference between between the compressed signal and, and how if I'm playing soft and, and, and if I'm playing, picking it hard, it's not that big. And, and that can be annoying when you're uh, playing live, I think. But that's one way of doing it. The other one, I mean, I think it's likely that you have a, an override pedal lying around if you play guitar. It's also somewhat likely that you have a compressor. Uh, the last idea is to use a, an equalizer, which also works extremely well. But uh, I think most people don't have an equalizer pedal lying around. Then in this case, I'm using uh, a parametric equalizer, um, which maybe the most common one is actually a graphic equalizer. But the idea is the same. And really what you need to do is you need to boost the mids. And you can, of course, choose yourself if you want to um, cut some low end or some high end along the way as well. This is really about what works in your situation also. And when you're setting up sound, the one thing that we're not talking about here is also that it is really depending on the room as well. So you will have to adjust things in the room very often also. Where it, yeah, and, and that, that's really also just about using your ears. In, in the end, when you're setting up your sound, whether it's effects or amp or guitar, it's also about using your ears and having an idea about how it should sound. Here I'm using the a parametric equalizer just to boost the mid. You can see it on the curve here that I'm just boosting, boosting around here. And that's because I'm using the boost around uh, 400 hertz and about 800 hertz, which is really just sort of the, I guess, the low and the upper mids. Uh, so without that, and with it, It's really just about making the sound fuller, I think, without without turning up uh, the other frequencies, without turning up the bass or the, uh, or the treble, because especially if you start playing loud, then that can be really annoying also. So those are sort of the, the three tricks you can start working with. And I think the main, uh, the, the best one of them, and also one that I really use on, on also on my semi hollows is the overdrive pedal with no drive as a sort of mid boost that will really help you cut through the mix also if you have to play really soft, I think. So that's that's something I use. And I use it also with humbugging guitar sometimes, simply because it's such a nice trick to have in there. I'm of course curious what you think about this video and also if you would like me to make more videos where I'm talking about the effects that I'm using and how I'm shaping the tone that I have. Uh, so leave a comment if you're interested in more or if there's something specific about this that you're interested in. If you want to check out another video where I'm playing a solid body guitar, uh, in a jazz context, then check out this video where I'm actually using my Yamaha SG-1000 that's hanging behind me here, uh, because that is actually quite a convincing jazz tone because of the humbuggers. Uh, so check out that video if you want to hear how that sounds. For the rest, if this is the first time you see one of my videos and you want to learn more about jazz guitar, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and on to the next